is the founder of Mo Mondays, which is now right across this country and going down in the States. His name is Michelle Nuray. Give him a big hand because he's coming up now to do our first talk of the evening. And at Mo Mondays, you get the truth. So I'll tell you the truth. Truth is, when we started Mo Mondays, it was just an idea that uh, somebody planted in my ear. It's like I was at a stand-up comedy show. One of the other speakers leaned over and said, Michelle, it would be cool to do something like this, but with speakers. And I said, okay, great idea. And so we did it. And what we found was that the public caught on. It's like they don't get a chance to go to conventions and conferences, see you know, great speakers get motivated the way that I've, I've, see, I've been on stage. I've shared the stage. I've been in the audience. Phenomenal speakers. You don't get that experience very much. And what I found is what we were missing was heart. Sure, there are plenty of networking events you could go to, great events where you could get, where you could see experts and listen to experts talk on all kinds of different topics, get into the minds of brilliant people, but where do you get a chance to get into people's hearts? But we have the opportunity to work too. So, uh, the first time, I gotta tell you, the first time I left Lebanon, how hard it was. Like, you know, war, in the morning we go out, for shopping, at night we hide from bombing. We don't see people, lots of people, they go shopping and they do whatever normal people they do over here in Canada. You're not gonna understand me un unless you, you, you live that life. So the first time I went to Europe, I looked all around the next day morning, I see people walking afternoon, which is something strange, happy laughing, walking everywhere, they're not scared of anything. So that's the real life, that's what I was looking for. But I didn't get the chance to, uh, to work. That a lot of things that are impacting on us in our society are social. And so a lot of the things that we did from a war on poverty standpoint where government or social service agencies try to impose things from on top in the last 20 years have not been successful. But you've probably read the research. If you, if you hang out with people that smoke, what do you do? You tend to smoke. If you hang out with people that overeat, you tend to overeat. You, if you hang out with a group that are into violence and drugs, you'll tend to be in a violent, gang-oriented community. If we change our attitude and think about some of these things as social diseases or having a social impact, then we come to the realization that if we want to make change, we actually have to change the whole community. We can't just change one person. And the, tr the attempts by government and social service agencies to try to change the one person haven't been nearly as successful. Regent Park is one of the examples that people often uh, look at. And this has been tried across Canada, across the United States. And what they did in Regent Park was interesting. You're probably familiar with it. A lot of poverty, a lot of violence. They formed this local committee. They found a local champion. They asked the people themselves on a grassroots basis, what are the challenges that you want to deal with? And they came up with after school arts and dance and, uh, and athletic programs as the solutions to get people off of the streets. And when I woke up, I realized that I wasn't in my bed. I was in the back of an ambulance car. And uh, I looked at a paramedic and I asked, what happened? And they said, that I just got into a really bad car accident. What happened to me was I was crossing the street and a pickup truck hit me. And um, I was thrown 20 feet high and 20 feet away and I cracked my pelvis from two places. That's all I had to hear and then I lost uh, my consciousness and I got to the hospital, don't know exactly what happened and finally woke up and I looked at the doctor and I said, the first thing I asked the doctor was, will I be able to walk again? And the doctor looked at me and he smiled and he said, you're a very lucky girl. He said, if it was an inch higher, I would have been paralyzed for the rest of my life. In her life was this job. And she didn't even have the social life. She just was into this job. And she just really took it very hard, as I just explained. Then we have Tammy. So Tammy also lost her job. And she's married. And she came home to her husband, Tom. And this is what she said. Oh my God, Tom, I can't believe it. My best day on the planet. I just got fired. I can start my own business now. I am so excited. I just can't believe this, my lucky day. I, oh, it's amazing. You know how a couple 
couple years ago when my sister Jan had cancer and I did all that research and I found out everything I could about wellness, well now I can start a wellness business. I cannot believe my lucky stars. I now have seed money to start my business. It's amazing. One day he attends a high school reunion and he's eager to see Angel so that he could tell her what an impact she had had on his life. But Angel is nowhere to be found. But her elder sister is. And so he approaches her and he asks her, whatever happened to, be, whatever happened to Angel? Thinking that perhaps she had grown into a life of domesticity with a couple of kids living somewhere in eastern Ontario, Ontario or something. Um, well, imagine his surprise and outright disappointment when the elder sister tells him, rather matter-of-factly, that Angel is now a homeless drug addict living somewhere on the streets of Toronto. Somewhere. Anywhere. Nowhere. I'm not sure if you see how that could be a problem. <laughs> like I said, we took public transit. And his mom loved leafing through magazines, so she would sit on the transit and leaf through magazines as he sat there quietly, quietly. One day she decided he was too quiet, looked over and he was caressing the leg of a lady beside him. And she had a weird look on her face, and he's, no, don't do that, she said to him. It's okay, the lady said. That seems wrong on so many levels. <laughs> but the thing that I love influencing my little grandson with is hugs and love. You see, I've taught him that when he says goodbye or hello to his Mima, we hug. So we did it. We oh. launched Mo Mondays in Mississauga. Yeah. Whoa. What a great night. Hey. What it's a great fantastic. night. Fantastic. You want to do it again? Sure, let's do it again next month. Okay.